As Ohio State prepares for the Big Ten title game, Carlos Tide and Braxton Miller named semifinalists for the Chicago Tribune's Big Ten MVP award. Last year, Miller won the silver football, and earlier this week, the junior was named the league's top quarterback and offensive player of the year, while Hyde was tabbed as the Big Ten's top running back. Mark has more on the game with the Buckeyes in Michigan State. The Spartan offense has improved as their season has played out, and the Buckeyes say it starts with quarterback Connor Cook. Uh, as fine a defense as there is in America, uh, very good players, excellent scheme, well coached. And I just look at statistically what that quarterback and the running back and those guys have done. It's, it's uh, from day one, uh, game one to game 11, there's most approved offense, maybe certainly in the Big Ten, maybe in one of the most approved in America. I think he just he just been managing the games really well, making really good decisions and everything. But it, I, I feel like he just just been doing what they asked him to do and just taking taking advantage of the opportunities that he he's getting. You know, he's he's gotten that offense to a really high level. They're playing really well right now. So I think he's got the leadership. Uh, he's got command over what they do. And um, you know, people might think that their offense is kind of simple. You got uh, you know pro style kind of offense, but they have some wrinkles in there. And I think that they're able to effectively run what they do. With his trademark humor, Ohio State Offensive Coordinator Tom Herman says preparing for Michigan State's tough defense is anything but fun. It's miserable. I don't know, fun. Have you watched that tape? They're, they're, they're really, really good, Bill. No, it's a, yeah, it is, I, and I say that jokingly. Yes, uh, this is why you coach. These are the, the, the games that you, uh, you know, your competitive nature can, can come out a little bit and, and say, I'm going to have uh, my offense, my checkers, or my, my pieces are going to be more prepared uh, and play harder and longer and with better technique and effort than, than yours. And Well, there's a lot of key uh, components. Their middle linebacker is a great player, and uh, you can tell he's the coach on the field. they got a quick twitch defensive end that uh, is their pass rusher. Uh, and this guy, uh, uh, the Will linebacker, is an extremely talented, fast athlete that runs down plays. With Jim Trestle disciple Mark D'Antonio calling the shots, there are many similarities between the Spartans and the Buckeyes of old. I guess you'd say conventional, maybe what, what uh, I had seen in the past you know, 10 years here. Um, some more two-back stuff, some other things, but those things pose problems as well. Um, almost what becomes conventional is the things you see every day. Yeah, their defense is played like our defense did in, um, in years past where uh, Tress was here. And they're stout, they're good, they're good against the run. Um, their strength in their defense and, and talent-wise, I've heard, is their defensive backs. And from what little film I've watched on them specifically, they do play very well and um, they got some tough hard-nosed guys up front so I mean from that aspect yeah absolutely. With 109 more rushing yards this season Braxton Miller will become the seventh Buckeye with back-to-back thousand-yard -back rushing seasons. Mike Miller from WIMA 1150 our Buckeye insider joins us now and when you look at the list of guys who have done that it's pretty much a one-name list Archie, Spencer, Byers, Eddie, Pittman, Beanie and now it could be Braxton. When you go back to back 1,000 yards at Ohio State, that's a select company. That is such a great list, Mark. We don't need first names for any of those guys, certainly. And I think it's a, a real tribute to uh, uh, Braxton Miller, the way he has rebounded from his early season uh, injury. And if, if anybody's watched him in the last handful of weeks, I think he's, won, he's run with a vengeance. He's a much smarter player than he used to be, and I think his growth has been quite evident. And the Buckeyes have benefited from that, and I have to believe the best is yet to come for Braxton Miller. Last three games, Braxton has averaged 160 yards rushing on the ground as he has felt a lot more comfortable after the knee injury back in week two of the season. Of course, he did damage against Michigan State last season up in East Lansing. And in Michigan State, when they compared Braxton Miller to Denard Robinson, who, of course, is the all-time leading rusher yeah. in NCAA history for a quarterback, they said Denard Robinson more has more of a flanker type of a running style yep. where Braxton Miller runs like a running back. Yes, Mar uh, Braxton can do the juke thing. And, and shake people off and is a lot more physical than Denard Robinson. Denard Robinson's straightaway speed, of course, was uh, tremendous and it's got him a job at the next level. But Braxton Miller, I think, is a much better quarterback for a whole variety of reasons. His passing is considerably improved and polished and his ability to run is both aggressive and elusive, making him, I think, quite frankly, maybe the key factor of all on Saturday night as the Buckeyes attack that Michigan State defense. Certainly the last month of the season, Ohio State's been heavy on the run, partially because of the success mm -hmm. they've had. 
with a Braxton Miller and, of course, with Carlos Hyde. But it certainly draws some comparisons back to 2009, where they really were run heavy the last three weeks of the season. 2009, last three games of the regular season, Terrell Pryor completed 60% of his passes. He was 31 of 51 for 285 yards, three touchdowns. Last three games for Braxton Miller, he's only completed 49% of his passes, has six touchdowns, has thrown for more yardage than Terrell Pryor did, did during that home stretch. But, uh, you know, part of it was weather-related. Yep. Part of it is because they've been so good running the ball. But they're going to be indoors on Saturday night, so weather should not be a factor. Do you think Ohio State's going to open up the playbook a little bit? Do they have to open up the playbook against a very stout Michigan State defense? I think they're probably going to have to, Mark. You're absolutely right. And, and the weather was a factor the last three games, coupled with the success running. It was windy at Illinois. There was no denying it. It was winter-like against uh, Indiana, and, uh, and the running, rushing success was so evident against Michigan. It's like, why not keep it on the ground? I'm not as concerned about that maybe as others. I think it's more of a plus for Ohio State that they bring such a strength with their rushing game. But if you recall in all of those games, there was some success throwing the football vertically for Ohio State. So they surely have not abandoned that. And I think it's absolutely still in their repertoire. Spartan offense has gotten better as the season has gone on. And mm -hmm. similar to Michigan, there's a lot of Ohio guys on the Michigan State roster. And they Michigan State talked about this week how there might be a little added uh, you know, chance for some of those Ohio Spartans, particularly ones that maybe weren't recruited by Ohio State, mm -hmm. to kind of show what the Buckeyes are missing out of by not recruiting them. Yeah, I mean, that's out there. That's always out there when Ohio State plays uh, anybody in the Big Ten, uh, frankly, and not, not the least of Michigan State. I, d I don't think it applies uh, uh, for this game. I think this game, because of its championship nature, and let's don't forget how much Michigan State has at stake. They're looking for their first Rose Bowl since the late 1980s. Wait a second. Mark D'Antonio says Rose Bowl's not good enough. If yeah. we beat Ohio State, we're 12 and 1. Yeah. Why shouldn't we be in consideration yeah. for the BCS National Championship game? Well, I, frankly, I can't argue with that. I mean, that goes to where my thinking is, too. Uh, but nevertheless, the prize is big for the Michigan State Spartans also in this football game. So I, I'm going to dismiss the in state thing. Uh, not that it's not an interesting point, though. Your prediction for Saturday night? Well, I'll tell you what, this is, this is going to be a dandy. I think, really, this will be the Buckeyes' biggest challenge of the year for a whole variety of reasons. I'm going to put it on Braxton Miller's shoulders with his read option and his ability to throw effectively in ideal weather conditions. I, I like the Buckeyes to win the Big Ten championship by about two scores. I think Ohio State will win 31 to 17. Now, because of a coin toss in 2011, yeah. the leaders' division champion was designated <laughs> the road team in 2011. Okay. They would alternate each year. So, 2012, the leaders were the home team. This year, the leaders, which is the division Ohio State's in, they are back to being the road team. The road team in the Ohio State Michigan State Series has won the last three meetings. All right. So, something else for the Buckeyes to think about as they head to <laughs> Indianapolis Saturday at 8 p.m. Andy, back to you.